just going to take the, the leap right now to answer the question because I'm time restrained. Uh, it sounds to me like you're talking about the ghost gun, and we passed that, and there shouldn't be anyone who is, shouldn't be, doesn't mean that there aren't going to be, um, anyone who's going to be engaging in fixing and putting those things and utilizing them because we passed that law. Um, however, as far as the capacity, the NRA are in the spaces and we, the community, needs to also be in those spaces to make sure that we speak to the elected officials what it is that's important to us. They're out there 24-7. They're in the chamber, they're talking to the ones that make the decisions and they sound to be making a loud noise. I don't see the community presence. I don't see the advocacy other than elected officials advocating to reduce the opportunity of these individuals um, having high capacity. And with that, I want to say that I need to excuse myself unless there's any direct questions for me. But I thank you for the opportunity of being here this evening and have a good night. Um, like Representative Williams said, uh, we passed that law, the 3D gun. Uh, it passed in the House, it passed in the Senate. I believe it's just waiting for the governor to sign it. And uh, thank you. There are certain things that will be worked out. Uh, okay. There are certain details about the phasing. The phasing, okay. But that's a law that I really think this year will go through uh, with God will. Um, with the other thing, we have many, many laws going uh, through the state, but I, I would echo what uh, Representative, uh, Representative Williams said. We need more people from the community to go to the state house, to go in front of the committees to express your concern to us, uh, because it's very important for them to listen from us especially from people in the community of your concern. Like you said, Doug, thank you for being here. Uh, you know, and it's important when people show up at the meeting, at the hearing, it's very important when you speak and you said uh, whatever you think. I, I, you brought a very important issues about guns and, and what we need to do at the State House. So we definitely need to pass the ghost gun bill and the high capacity magazine ban and the assault weapons ban. But I think we need to take more systemic uh, action to really address uh, a lot of gun control because I don't think that's enough. And you know, this may be a little controversial, but you know, when the Brady campaign started, it was the National Council to control handguns. And in other countries that have successfully really reduced gun crime, they've done it by tackling handguns. And you know, there's certain things we can't do constitutionally. But we've just got our sights so far back. It was a time when assault weapons been everyone agreed with it. You know, it was an easy common sense thing. We need to get back to talking about real European style gun control. And that's where I hope that we go. Um, so so that, that's very much where I want to see us go. But we have to fight the NRA. They're very powerful in this state. And we've got a lot of work to do. Um, you know, I'm, I did this campaign finance complaint against them that got them shut down in second highest fine state history years ago. But they're back, and they're powerful, and they have a lot of power. When the House Speaker and Senate President both have A-plus ratings from the NRA, take a lot of money from them, makes a big difference. Mr. Officer, maybe I misunderstood. Did you ask if we could pass something in Providence only? You did ask that question, right? Uh, thank you for the clarification also it w was for our state legislators to 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 uh, address the the ghost gun situation and um, and high, limiting high capacity magazines for the city council people it was thinking about how Providence can create some ordinances that can bite into this also as a city well, well, I certainly support the, um, the banning of uh, those weapons, but you couldn't do it in a private. I hate to be the lawyer here, but Constitution would never pass muster just to do it in Providence and have it in the rest of the state. You'd have a long haul with that one, but 
just something to think about. Uh, yeah, and I think I think the Senator Bell has hit it on the head. You need to change the leadership. Leadership is the gatekeeper for these issues not passing. And they need to be brought forth, and it's just not happening. So, as uh, as uh, Rep. Williams had indicated, you need to go up there and lobby. You need to go into their neighborhoods and work against them and say to them, look, if you don't, we've got an army of people that are going to work against you in your next election. And by the way, you know, the Speaker won by 87 votes. It only would have taken, you know, 44 votes to swing that. So, just something to think about. And some mail ballots. Thank you. <laughs> so, um, this isn't... <laughs> This isn't um, about uh, gun control, but I would say the, the big thing around like student health and wellness that I think a lot about and talk a lot about, we're talking about Providence Public Schools, is more, um, or let's say as much funding and resource at least for emotional and social supports for health and well-being as there are for, for policies that feel more like policing our students and all of the ways that those happen. Um, and so I think that's a, that's a huge piece of you know, we've spent the whole last year talking about what it feels like as a young person to feel like your city has disinvested from you. And I think feeling, you know, I, I work a lot with the Providence Student Union and PRISM. What I hear from young people is, is feeling like their, their schools are not their own, you know. And, and so providing that support um, is, is a huge impact for me and I think relates to the issue you're talking about. Thank you, Councilwoman. That's a great message. I was just talking to some students from uh, um, the Urban Arts, and they were saying basically the same thing. But for me, um, when it comes to a uh, controversy topic like uh, the Ghost Guns, the magazines, I think that calls for a greater campaign. For me, I mean, coming from an organizing background, we just don't depend on our politicians, our elected officials, or our, our city government, our government in period to lead the way. I believe grassroots comes up from the bottom, and I think things, the movement starts there, and then the pressure doesn't really come from us passing you know, ordinance or resolutions or stuff like that. I think it comes from the voices of the people, and I strongly believe that um, if we're going to control this, we gotta we got to educate people around what's really going on and the importance of the public safety that you mentioned, Doug, especially in schools. Um, it's serious, it's very serious, and I'm looking forward to how we can build on a bigger conversation around, not only from my position, but from the grassroots position as well. Thank you.